Welcome. In this presentation, the Maine Forest Service Insect and Disease Lab would like to provide some helpful tips for homeowners and other land managers on how to identify some of the more commonly encountered caterpillar species in Maine that are sometimes considered forest pests or human nuisances. Many of these caterpillars are large and hairy in appearance, making them easy to confuse with one another. Learning how to accurately identify these common species can help you learn which species may require management, which are relatively harmless, and help us to help you by providing the correct management recommendations right away. Thanks for tuning in. While many caterpillars become easier to identify as they become bigger, learning how to identify earlier instars or other evidence of certain species early in the season can help to address more serious problems with the foliation at a later point. Take a look at spongy moth, for example, also known as Lymantria dispar and formerly known as European gypsy moth. Spongy moth egg masses are present throughout the entire fall and winter seasons and are easy for the average homeowner to observe. These can provide a rough estimate on how large the spongy moth population might be the following year, or at least alert you to their presence in a certain area. If you know you've got a lot of egg masses early in the season, you can expect a lot of mature caterpillars later in the season, but management of these mature caterpillars is often too little too late. Mature spongy moth caterpillars are easy to identify on their own, but the presence of similar species in Maine lately has made the task more difficult. A trademark of spongy moth caterpillars are a pair of knobs on either side of their head, which are present at all instars or ages of caterpillars. Once nearly full grown, spongy moth caterpillars develop five pairs of bluish spots towards their front ends and six pairs of reddish spots towards their rear ends. Again, Caterpillars with developed spots are close to maturity, meaning they have already done a lot of feeding and a lot of damage. If you're considering treating for spongy moth, it is best to monitor egg masses and learn to identify smaller spongy moth caterpillars before these spots develop. They will still appear dark in color, be covered in hair, and have the prominent knob on each side of the head. Identifying early instar spongy moth caterpillars is essential for effective management because mature caterpillars are not as susceptible to treatment and a great deal of defoliation damage has already occurred by this time. Again, remember to look for the characteristic knobs on either side of the head that gives the head a wide appearance. In addition to egg masses and mature caterpillars, other evidence of spongy moth is often visible throughout the year as well. Female moths are largely flightless meaning they will often deposit their own eggs near the same location where they hatch and pupated themselves. Areas covered with old egg masses, empty pupil cases, and new egg masses tell you that spongy moth is still active in a certain area and provides an early warning for any potential treatment in the following season. Our most serious forest pest in Maine right now, brown tail moth, is one that is still commonly confused with spongy moth. Like spongy moth, brown tail moth provides evidence throughout the fall and winter months of its presence in an area and its potential population levels in the following season. Small winter webs at the end of branch tips are constructed by tying a few leaves together with bright white silk. Look for these most commonly on oaks and fruit trees. During the spring, hundreds of small caterpillars will cluster on the outside of these winter webs before they begin to disperse for feeding. If you look closely, these caterpillars are already identifiable as brown tail moth. Once they leave the safety of their winter webs, brown tail moth caterpillars mature quickly and become more easily identifiable. They display two prominent orange spots towards their rear ends, accompanied by body segments flanked in white. Remember, the hairs on these caterpillars are toxic and irritating to human skin. Unfortunately, this pest is commonly encountered on and around homes as mature caterpillars look for sheltered pupation sites that human structures have to offer. Another large caterpillar that occasionally causes extensive defoliation in Maine is the forest tent caterpillar. Compared to spongy moth caterpillars or brown tail moth caterpillars, these are not quite as hairy. They also feature blue flanks and a unique white spot on each body segment. These spots have been described as little penguins, keyholes, shoe prints, or exclamation points. Despite its name, forest tent caterpillar does not actually construct tents or nests. Most easily confused with forest tent caterpillar is the eastern tent caterpillar. True to its name, eastern tent caterpillar does construct large nests. 
These nests are usually found in fruit trees and are typically located at the intersection of several large branches. These are much larger than brown tail moth winter webs and are not found at the end of branches. The caterpillar itself is also flanked with blue, but features a prominent white stripe running down the entirety of its back with no distinct spots. Eastern tent caterpillar usually does little damage and is not considered a forest pest requiring management. The large sprawling webs of the fall webworm caterpillar are also commonly confused with brown tail moth winter webs or eastern tent caterpillar tents. Although these webs do extend to the end of branches, they are not compact like brown tail moth winter webs and will often engulf an entire branch or even an entire tree when populations are high. These nests grow with the caterpillars who remain inside these nests for most of their development. For this reason, the caterpillars themselves are not often observed. Their body color may vary, but they are typically covered in long white hairs versus the darker hairs of spongy moth caterpillars or brown tail moth caterpillars. The name of this insect also holds an important aspect of its identification. This insect only begins to appear much later in the season than other spring and early summer defoliators. Though very distinct in its own right, the two orange spots on the back of the white marked tussock moth caterpillar means that it can sometimes be mistaken for brown tail moth caterpillar, which also bears two orange spots. The orange head capsule, large white tufts on its back, and yellowish coloration should help this species to be distinguished from brown tail moth caterpillars. Two other species worth mentioning are the hickory tussock moth and the banded tussock moth. The hickory tussock moth caterpillar is whitish overall with pairs of long black tufts at either end along with black markings along its back. The banded tussock moth caterpillar is yellowish overall with long black or white tufts at either end. These mature caterpillars are usually active later in the season and are commonly encountered around homes as they search for suitable pupation sites. Like brown tail moth caterpillar, the hair of these species can sometimes cause serious skin irritation to sensitive individuals, and so proper precautions should be taken to avoid coming in direct contact with them. We hope this short presentation has been helpful in providing some of the basic skills needed to identify some of the most common caterpillar pest species encountered in Maine. We understand that caterpillar identification is easier said than done sometimes, and that's what we're here for. Please visit our website for more information on some of these species, and as always, please feel free to reach out to us for additional help with identification and management recommendations. Thank you.